Welcome to this Wednesday webinar on Google Drive resources versus files. My name is Paul Lynch, and joining me today are Ryan Randall, Kimberly Tompkinson, and Sasha Johnson. I will go ahead and start us off by talking about a few differences with each approach. So first, the differences between storing a file in Moodle or in Google Drive. File location. Is the file stored locally on your computer? And will that file then be uploaded into your Moodle course? Or is it stored in the cloud and accessible via a link in your Moodle course? Each option has its benefits. This is something that Ryan will discuss in more detail shortly. Load times. The amount of files uploaded and stored in your Moodle course can affect the load time of the course for yourself and your students. If your course does contain a lot of files, you could reduce the size of the course by uploading those files to Google Drive, then providing a link to those files within your course. This will be dependent on the types of files that you're uploading in your course. So let's say, for example, you have a Word document. This is something that you could convert into a Google Doc, and then you could share a link to that Google Doc in your course. But other files, such as a .psd file or a Photoshop file, may need to be uploaded directly into that course. Document maintenance. The way you store your file will change your workflow when amending course documents. Kim will go into more detail later about updating cloud-based documents. Video. With videos, you have the option to upload the video file directly to Moodle. You can also upload that video file to your Google Drive and then create a shareable link for students to view that video within your Google Drive. Or you can take that video and upload it to your ISU linked YouTube channel and then you can link or embed that video into your Moodle course. Then last is the student and faculty experience. For students, leveraging resources that can be built to be quickly interacted with. So for example, do students need to download a PDF of that journal article or can it be accessed with the link through the publisher or the ISU library? By linking to a resource, you can also reduce the digital clutter for students and for yourself. For faculty, one thing that'll affect your choice is how you want to keep your course resources organized. Another thing to take into consideration is backup and restore time. Thinking back to the load times, the more data that's stored in a class, the longer it will take to process and download a backup of that course. This will also lead to longer upload times when restoring a course. Next, I'm going to hand things off to Ryan, who will discuss the benefits of each approach and things to consider when deciding how to best manage your files. Thank you, Paul. Now I'll talk about the benefits and considerations about Google Drive or uploading files straight into Moodle ISU. Broadly speaking, sharing in Google Drive will help things work across devices, while uploading files to Moodle ISU will help with working in other software programs. Now I'll drill down a little bit more into the details. So benefits of Google Drive. As I was saying, it helps with being cross-platform. When students work on different operating systems, we have people who work on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, or on different devices. So if they're on a tablet or on a phone, laptop, a desktop, Google Drive will let them access across all of these things. And you won't have to worry too much about that. Um, the versions will update everywhere, wherever you as the faculty make changes or wherever the students make changes on their versions of a file, it will update everywhere. So you don't have to worry about final copy, really the final copy, really final copy too. You don't have to worry about that kind of conundrum of file naming. You'll know that the file version that you're using is the one is that you want to be sharing with others. You have easier collaboration among students, among other faculty members, or if you're working with students, among whoever you share the file with, you can control that kind of collaboration easily. 
And you can also have a nifty trick with preview or copy links that I'll show you on the next slide. So hold on a minute and I'll demonstrate what those actually look like. The considerations of these are you have to manage the privileges. So you have to be a little bit more in control of who can view it, who can share it, who can edit it, et cetera. So it's a little bit more um, for you to keep in mind, but it also allows you to have some extra tricks as I was just mentioning. So that's a consideration as well as a benefit depending on what you want to do. And also with all of those things, explicit instructions will help. So you can tell students, this is how you want them to upload something or how you want them to alter it if you've given them a template. For the benefits of a file uploaded to ISU, Moodle, if the student needs advanced features or advanced control, like some of the nice macros in Excel or some very specific formatting that's beyond what Google Docs can handle, then you might want to consider uploading those types of files. If it'll be files that somebody uses in another program. So for instance, if you want to share a data file that somebody's going to be using in Python, that would be a great time to upload that file to Moodle ISU. And it's accessible offline if it's been uploaded to Moodle ISU. And therefore, it'll also work in the unlikely event that Google has an outage, students would still be able to work locally on their own device. Considerations are that the server space, as Paul was saying, affects the imports backup and restore. So the more you have actually in your Moodle course, the slower things will load and the slower things will transfer when you make another copy. And compatibility isn't guaranteed. Students might have to download, for instance, on Macintosh, which doesn't come with some of the different Word programs installed. They might open a program called Keynote if they're trying to see a PowerPoint where they might open pages when you're talking about opening up in Word. And if they're very new to having a computer, these things might throw them for a loop. So the compatibility is not guaranteed across operating systems. So you might have to be a little bit more on top of that yourself. And finally, you'll have to remember to upload your changes. If you make changes locally, you'll have to remember to change that between semesters or even within a semester to make sure that the Moodle hosted version of a file is as up to date as you want it to be. So those are some of the more granular benefits and considerations. Now I'm gonna show you that cool trick about the versions that you can share with Google Drive. So at the end of the URL, the string of characters that you put into the browser bar address line, at the very end of it, you can manually change to have it say either preview or copy. And if you type in preview and share that link with people, they'll be able to see what's on the document, but not actually interact with it. They won't be able to download it or make a copy very easily. I don't know if they can at all, in fact. If you want them to make a copy, then you can very easily make this possible by adding copy at the end. And then this is what they'll see when they load that web page immediately, it will prompt them to make a copy of their own. So this is a time when, if you wanna share a template, you can have explicit instructions that say, this is how to alter this for your own content. So that is some of the different benefits considerations. And up next, Kim will tell us more about which you should use and why. Thank you, Ryan. So which application, which type of document, which type of file should you use and why? That's what we're going to talk about now. Google applications and other products offer an array of features, and it's important to know what your options are so you can choose the best one for your purpose. So today, we're going to look at Google Drive and Microsoft options, and mostly because they are the most popular. So Paul mentioned embedding videos, but you can also embed Google documents into a Moodle course. However, by default, they render very small and scroll bars appear that you have to use to see all areas of the document. But by adding some HTML code to adjust the size, 
an embedded document can be a good way to display your doc within a Moodle page if that's what you need to do or if that's what you choose to do. However, if you can put the same information into a Moodle page without a separate document, that would be the preferred method. So both Microsoft and Google provide templates that can be used and modified to fit your needs. However, Microsoft products have more to choose from and their tools and applications come with additional features you won't find with Google Apps. If you are creating your own template for your students to use to complete an assignment, a Google Doc is ideal. This will allow you to have a consistent format for your assignments and reduce confusion that students might have with regards to your expectations. Another benefit of Google resources is that when you make changes, those changes are automatically saved and are reflected anywhere you have linked your document or resource. Google Documents and Resources also allow you to share resources easily and facilitate collaboration. Although not exactly the same, both Microsoft and Google Resources allow you to comment within the document's history and to see that history. MS Word provides the Track Changes feature, while Google Resources allow you to see version history. Either product allows you to work offline. However, for Google resources to update, you must have an internet connection. Both have formatting options that allow you to customize your document. However, Microsoft does offer more features. So Moodle offers some tools to support the use of resources and courses. The document conversion tool represented by the circle made up of three colored arrows allows students to convert a file to their preferred format. For example, a text file can be converted to an audio format. The Curriculum Builder is a Moodle tool you can use to collect library resources for your students that allows them to access them directly from the library. If you would like to learn more about how either of these tools can be used, please reach out to any member of the ITRC staff and we would be happy to help. If you would like to learn more, we have a variety of resources available. You can simply scan the QR code on the screen to access the links you see here. Our Tiger Tracks knowledge base is a library of how to's at your fingertips. We also have a library of short walkthrough videos on various topics in our ITRC video library that you can find on our YouTube channel. And you're always welcome to meet with us at the ITRC. You can email us at itrc at isu.edu or give us a call. Our extension is 5880. And our front lab in the Obola Library, room B17, is open if you want to drop in during business hours. And we also welcome you to watch for future Wednesday webinars in the ISU Today announcements and the ISU events calendar. And we want to thank you for joining us today and hope you have a wonderful day.